Hello, in this video, I would like to explain price floor. So price floor is another price control policy. And the definition here is the government can legally to establish the minimum price for a good or services, okay? So it will be the minimum price. This is why we call it as the floor price. And then here, I would like to talk about examples in our test book. So for examples, uh, it assume now the government impose a price floor for the market for of labor. So in the labor market, now the government impose the minimum wage. And once the government impose this minimum wage, what will happen to the markets? So there will be two possible outcomes with the price floor. The first one is this price floor will be binding constraint and then binding constraint means this policy is effective so once the policy is effective it will make the market price equal to the price floor however there is another possible outcome that this price floor is non-binding which means under this policy the market price will still equal to the equilibrium price there is no impact on the market Okay, so let me analyzing these two possible outcomes one by one. So let's first look at the binding constraint. Okay, so what's the binding constraint? Let me show you one example here. In the labor market, I will put the quantity of the labor on the horizontal axis and the wages. I use W to represent the wages on the vertical axis. Demand curve of labor is downward sloping, which means if the wage decrease, then firms and corporations, they would like to hire more workers. However, if wage increase, firms and corporations, they just want to hire fewer workers. We also have the supply curve. So the supply curve of the labor market means if the wages are higher, there is more people would like to join into the labor market. However, if the wages lower, then there is fewer people would like to offer their labor in the market. They will intersect at one point, and this is our original equilibrium point. It will determine the equilibrium wage and the equilibrium quantity of the labor. So here we assume the minimum wage will be $6, okay? So here will be $6 per hour for minimum wage, and then the available laborers in the market will equal to 50, okay? And if now government impose the minimum wage, and this minimum wage happens to be $12, okay? So I just write it down here. Now the price floor regulated by government equal to twelve dollars per hour. Okay. So which means I can write I can draw a graph, okay? So I can put here as twelve dollar. So that will be the twelve dollars, and then I can draw a horizontal line across this graph. So, as far as we know, this is the minimum wage and this is the minimum price for labor per hour. All the price or all the wages above this minimum wage, they are legal, okay? This is the legal price. However, all the wages below $12, they are illegal. So for example, in Oregon, uh, I mean in Covallis, the minimum wage up to now will be $11.25. If you apply for a job and then the employees can offer you like $30 per hour, then that would definitely legal. However, if the employer can only offer you $10 per hour and this is illegal, okay? So this is why I say above this $12, it's legal. However, below this $12, it's illegal. Then the question here is, what's the policy impact on the market? What's the policy impact on the market? We would like to say at this $12 here, we can find out wages higher so there is fewer workers will be 
higher in the market. So probably firms and corporations would just would like to hire 20 workers. However, wage increase, more workers would like to offer their work, right? Would like to join into the labor market. So probably they were, there are 80 workers would like to join into the labor market. So it will first create a surplus, right? Then we will notice here under this price floor, we will find out there is a surplus, okay? Surplus exists and surplus will equal to 80 minus 20, which will equal to 60. When the labor market has surplus, what does it mean? Surplus here means unemployment, right? We will talk about unemployment in details in chapter 15, okay? So you can notice now under this price floor, it will create a surplus in the market. But do you think now it's legal for the firms and corporations to lower the wage and then in order to hire more workers? Probably it's illegal, right? So in this circumstances, firms cannot lower the wages, right? Can lower their hourly wages. And then it will make our market stay in this surplus. So market will stay in the surplus. And under this part, we would like to say, this is a binding constraint because the workers who can find a job, they can enjoy higher hourly wages, right? So they can definitely beneficial from this policy. However, this policy has some drawbacks, such as unemployment might increase. So the conclusion here I will make is, I will have the conclusion here. When the price floor larger than the equilibrium wage, okay, so we can notice now the price floor is above the minimum, uh, is above the equilibrium wage. Then this is a binding constraint. Then this is a binding constraint. This is a binding constraint. And it will result a surplus in the market. And then what's the non-binding price floor? So non-binding price floor, I will also use the similar example, okay? Still talking about the labor market. So here we assume Originally, we will still have the labor market. I put the labor's quantity on the horizontal axis and the wage on the vertical axis. Demand curve, supply curve, okay? We also have our equilibrium wage here equal to $6 per hour, okay? And then we have our equilibrium quantity equal to 50. But now the government imposed the price floor, okay? So government imposed a price floor and the price floor will equal to three dollars per hour, okay? This is the minimum wage that the government regulated, okay? Three dollars per hour, okay? And then I can mark it here, okay? I just mark here as three dollars, okay? And then similarly, I can draw a horizontal line across this graph. This is the minimum wage, which means all the price above $3, they are legal, okay? However, all the wages below $3, they are illegal. 
because three dollars will be the minimum wages that the firms and corporations need to pay for their workers. Okay. Then the question here is, what's the market outcome under this price floor? Okay. So I might ask you the question. What's the market outcome? What's the market outcome under this price? Okay, under this price floor. We assume that if the market, if the minimum wage now equal to three dollars per hour, you can notice now the wage or the cost is so low, so firms they would like to hire more workers. They might would like to hire or as many workers as 80s. However, the wage is so low, so households or the other individuals, they have no incentive to offer their laborers in the market. There is only 20 people would like to offer their job in the market, would like to offer their laborers in the market. So first, it will create a shortage, right? So now the labor market will facing shortage. And the shortage here will equal to the demand, okay, from firms and corporations. Miners, only 20 individuals would like to offer their laborers. So we will have the surplus equal to 60 people, okay? 60 people. And when the market facing this shortage, is the market will stay in a shortage forever or if the market can go back to equilibrium, okay? So look at this price floor. So now price floor is equal to $3 per hour, and this is the minimum wage. And now the market face shortage. So facing the circumstances, the firms and corporations, in order to hire more workers, what can they do? They can increase the price, right? They can increase the wage because all the wages above $3, they are legal. So firms and corporations, they can increase the wage. So firms can increase, they can increase the wage above $3, right? They can increase the wage by $3, and that would result in fewer shortage. So shortage would decrease as wages increase, okay? And what will happen at the end of the market? The market actually can go back to equilibrium, right? So market can finally go back to equilibrium. So we would like to say under this price floor, at the beginning, it will create a shortage. However, facing shortage, firms and corporations, they can increase their wage above $3 because this is legal. Therefore, the markets can finally go back to equilibrium. And we would like to say, if this is the case, the conclusion here will be if government set up the price floor less than equilibrium wage, then this is non-binding constraint. This is a non-binding policy. This is a policy, okay. and it will not change the market outcome at the end. And the market outcome will not change at the end, okay? Market outcome will not change, okay? So, this is the videos talking about how to distinguish the binding 
price floor and non-buying price floor. Thank you so much for watching.